Good evening, campers, dreamers, and babysitters. When his daughter Angela and her friend Catherine show signs of demonic possession, it unleashes a chain of events that forces single father Victor Fielding to confront evil. Terrified and desperate, he seeks out Chris McNeil, the only person alive who's witnessed anything like this before. Yes, folks, this is our Raw Reaction Review for The Exorcist Believer. This video is sponsored by Full Moon Features. If you love horror collectibles, make sure to check out Full Moon's Tiny Terrors. Stick around for more information at the end of the video, or go to the website in the link below. Another day, another David Gordon Green horror property. Luke, we have been cautiously optimistic, I would say, about uh, The Exorcist. I, I guess as optimistic as we could be. You know, we weren't the biggest fans of uh, some of the installments in the, the Halloween trilogy there. I think there's only really one that we can kind of agree that we enjoy. And I think it's more so for the fact of it just being kind of dumb fun. Um, so, you know, not really having the best batting average here. But let's be honest, we are not the most diehard Exorcist fans. In fact, I, until recently... I'd only seen this movie one time and I was super young, so I did post a video earlier this week uh, giving my thoughts and feelings on the original Exorcist. And uh, I did really enjoy it. There's a lot to love there. I understand completely why it's a classic. This being a direct sequel. Now, he's played this game before with Halloween. How'd he do with the Exorcist Believer? Uh, well, you know, as all of our coverage here on The Exorcist Believer, I said, you know, for me, religious horror, a lot of possession films are a hard sell for me. It's something where they all kind of fall into this basic rhythm, no matter how you start it. Um, and then it just kind of comes re becomes redundant. There's really not much mystery there for the most part. Um, so I said, you know, going into this, uh, it just has to be hopefully a different take than what we're used to seeing. And hopefully it doesn't drag. And I got to say, unfortunately, it kind of met both those uh, for me there, where I think you know, looking at this, I think there is that first act is way stronger than the rest of the entire film. Um, I think it moves way faster. And then I think for me, we kind of hit a wall and it just kind of starts flatlining uh, for the most part. I think, you know, I think there are a couple of interesting grains of ideas here that are never, you know, fully developed and there's a couple of jarring scenes but i think that's that's very few and far between um yeah you know i can agree with uh, a lot of that I, I i definitely uh think that that first act is the strongest piece of this film and you know i think that a lot of that has to go with the fact that we get a lot of character time we get a lot of setup with um you know our, our main uh, two here who I'm, I'm going to say it's probably uh, Victor and Angela and that's uh, played by Leslie Odom Jr. and uh, Lydia Juliet who you know for the most part I gotta say we'll save performances here in a minute but like I think that they have wonderful chemistry together they were very uh, convincing father daughter duo um, and you know they kind of uh, really take the time to to build up a little bit of a backstory and then kind of ease you into the film. And that is something that I, I kind of appreciated. I know in our trailer reaction, I had said that I was getting a massive uh, prisoners vibes just from, you know, the kind of the shots they were showing. And, you know, for that first act, it, it is a lot like that. And then I even commented to you that there is a, you know, a section of this towards the end of the fir uh, first act uh, that I thought was very impactful. It was a very unique and cool way to build tension uh, that had nothing to do with really possession. It was more of like a natural human response to uh, traumatic events. And I thought that they really did that well. So I was very impressed. And I do unfortunately have to agree with you, though, that I think shortly after that, I say probably about halfway through the second act, um, we start to fall into trope bill. And we just start throwing every single possession trope uh, at the wall just to see what sticks. And I think the thing for me is it didn't really drag as much as we just kind of kept going through each of these tropes. But we don't really resonate or stick on them. They just kind of just go to the, this one and then the next one and the next one. And it's just like right when you think they're going to do something interesting, they pull back. And it's like, ah, come on, like. What is the what are we doing here? 
And for me, uh, getting into the third act, I think that there's a lot of interesting ideas. There's some cool imagery. Um, I will give them this. They, they do have some things I want to see them expand upon. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately, I, I agree with you. They, they just really uh, pull those final couple punches and they, uh, they really just fall into the same old, same old as far as possession films go. Yeah, and, you know, I think that formula for a possession film is it, it's a tough cookie to crack, you know, mm -hmm. um, it, to an extent, because, you know, looking at a lot of these films, they fall into, you know, um, a lot of people sitting around conversing while we have the possessed, you know, person sitting in a room w just waiting to, you know, we're throwing um, uh, spiritual things at them and that's really kind of always uh, a big culmination in a sense a big centerpiece of the film and I think it's really hard to kind of keep that moving keep that ball going depending on how long you're going to sit in those scenes and you know for uh, a lot of this um, especially when once that supernatural element is dumped into the film it just gets back into that formula and I think that's where, really where it starts dragging for me it's like it all seems too familiar where it's like you know what's going to be coming. So it's nothing like they're really building that tension because I know the scene you're referring to early in that first act, it is very tense. I felt it, um, it, it going into that. I think that was the only time my heart was kind of beating a little faster than normal. But the rest of it, especially, you know, when we get to those more supposedly more terrifying scenes, it was just kind of more... Um, not necessarily an eye roll, but just kind of like, you know, I've seen this several times in the theater already, and this is the stuff that I try to avoid because it's not new, it's not fresh. Um, so, you know, I just kind of found myself passing the time. I did check my phone a couple of times, and I hate doing that, but I kind of kind of wanted to see where we were at in terms of the runtime here because it wasn't necessarily that I was falling asleep. It was just I could tell what was going to be coming next. Yeah, and I think that that is going to be the death blow for this film uh, for a lot of people is that you know it, it does start off really strong and it starts off with introducing a lot of cool ideas maybe even uh diving into some things that we've haven't really looked at as far as the exorcist franchise goes when it comes to these specific demons and these entities but they really uh kind of leave it and it does feel like maybe that's something they're leaving for um you know future installments we know this is a trilogy and my biggest thing coming out of that trailer and i said it in our short was i just do not want to feel like i'm just waiting for installments uh to get a more satisfying punch and unfortunately i feel like that's kind of where i'm left off at but i i gotta say um i know that this this seems very negative but this isn't on the level of like a halloween ends upset for me this isn't on even the level of like, I would say a, tw a Halloween 2018 upset for me as far as my gripes go. I do see a lot of maturity uh, built up in the way they handled this story as opposed to how they handled uh, a lot of the Halloween stuff. And I think that, you know, the uh, the the cinematography and just the the camera movement and the placement uh, that David Gordon Green and his team used uh, really top notch here. You can tell that they've definitely been uh, in the trenches making a lot of films recently because they're using a lot of really cool techniques. They're using a lot of uh, very interesting imagery. Like I said, as far as that third act goes, that was some of my favorite stuff. And I just wish we could see more of it. And that's the part that I'm saying they're definitely teeing that up for sequels. And I just didn't want to feel that. I really wanted you, you can tee it up for sequels. But if you're doing that, you got to leave me with a gut punch. And there is a punch, but I just don't think it was nearly as hard as they thought it was going to be. Yeah, I honestly going through this film, especially when we do get into that third act, you know, for me, outside the imagery uh, that they produced there for me didn't really hit. Again, it fell in line more so with a lot of things we do see in possession films with some CGI and things like that. And it was just, you know, same old, same old for me for a lot of it. I think... Um, I was really waiting for this thing to get going, I think. I remember checking my phone and trying to do the math in, in my head saying, oh, we're nearing the end of this, and I feel unsatisfied. And we were kind of really getting into that big culmination. I was like, I 
feel like there has to be more here, and there wasn't. So, you know, as we got to more so a resolution, uh, as you know, as much of a resolution we can get in the first installment here, um, you know, I felt really underwhelmed, wanting more and not in a good way because I just felt like it didn't pack enough of a punch for me. I was really expecting a little bit more. Um, I thought, you know, the stakes were going to be a little bit higher, um, but you know, overall, it just really did leave me unsatisfied. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, to kind of cap things off, I, I do, like I said, I wanted to mention uh, Lydia Juliet and Leslie Odom Jr. are very strong here. Uh, Ann Dowd is in this. She's been in a lot of, uh, you know, other horror properties like Hereditary and stuff. And, you know, I she's okay, but I've seen her be a lot better. I think, again, it does fall into a problem where she comes off very tropey. I mean, it's just the, the backstory they give her and what it comes into. It's nothing we haven't seen before. It's very um, possession or exorcist, like kind of uh, film, like expected, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, and, you know, I do want to say, I think that uh, Olivia O'Neill and uh, Lydia Juliet, uh, they do a really good job with, uh, you know, portraying the possessed children. Um, you know, I think that they really commit to it. There's a lot of makeup. There's a lot of great looking prosthetics, but Again, that's not something that we've ever really complained about with Gordon Green's horror films. I think that, you know, the team that he has when it comes to makeup, prosthetics, masks, anything like that, they do a really good job and they show that off here. Um, and I do like some of the elements that they use uh, involving other characters in this third act. Again, I just don't know if there really was enough there. Um, but performance wise, I think everybody's really solid. I think, uh, you know, from a filmmaking standpoint, technically, again, everything's really solid. I really think we need to get some, uh, some stronger writers in there with a little bit more of a vision for something different, something that can kind of push these exorcist possession films to that next level. Um, you know, everybody always says they want to see, you know, the next level for the Universal Monsters, you know, slashers, all this stuff. And we've seen people do cool things with those. But I, I think that of any genre right now, the possession exorcist film archetype needs a push. Yeah, it needs to be revitalized and kind of re-rack and see what direction we want to go in here. Because a lot of these, I mean, you could take uh, probably every possession film released in the past year and they're all going to fall into that basic formula for the most part um there is a lot of quality filmmaking here i don't want to you know say that david gordon green doesn't have an eye behind the camera i think you know looking at the, this film and i know we have our issues with halloween there's some there's a lot of quality filmmaking there i think there's a lot of great great shots and um you know i think that that aspect of it is enjoyable and like i said yeah i was pretty negative toward as we get into that supernatural element but that first act for me i was pretty on board with it i yeah. um i was really excited to see where it was going to go i thought you know that element there i'm honestly would be intrigued to see david gordon green tackle more of a, a thriller suspense oh absolutely um uh, because you know he had me on board uh throughout that and then once we kind of dropped the the supernatural element unfortunately it lost all of its steam for me um but i definitely want to see you know where he goes in that instance i just you know uh, for me exorcist believer um it i only had a couple requirements that i i hope they didn't fall into and unfortunately they fell into them yeah and you know i i feel the i that sentiment you just made about him doing a thriller i 100 percent want to see that after seeing this because yeah he does hit the right the right notes for that um you know even uh th that setup i mean again that first act is really strong guys like it is it is that good like i was impressed that like you know i i think that setup if you would have just not followed through with the exorcist and say this was an original film and they could have taken more of an entity possession angle kind of like how talk to me does where it's it's possession in a sense but it's you know they do a twist they do a nice little turn if you would have done something not saying exactly like talk to me but just yeah with the way these girls go missing and there's something more to it could have been a really interesting story. And I think he could have had a lot of freedom. I just don't know if I really want to see another horror film with David Gordon Green attached to an IP. I, I think he yeah. needs to write something original or at least get some writers in here who have something original to tell. Let him do that because the dude has a cinematic eye and I think that he can definitely deliver something good. Uh, last little note before we wrap things up here. I do want to say um, you know, if you're looking forward to Ellen Burstyn in this, 
Um, I think she's fine. I think she does a good job with what she's got, but it is nothing more really than a glorified cameo. So don't expect a giant role. Uh, she's not in this as much as like, you know, we had um, with Lori and everything in the Halloween it's films. It's more it's, ceremonial. It's, it is very ceremonial. Like, we didn't have yes. to attach her because it's mm -hmm. the exorcist. Exactly. So don't if, if that's a selling point for you, I don't want you to go in and immediately be turned off once stuff like that starts to, uh, you know, transpire. But uh, yeah, other than that, guys, that's going to wrap us up here for Exodus Believer. I think for me, this is going to be a proceed with caution. I don't think you need to skip it, but I definitely think that uh, you should be weary and know that, you know, you are kind of just getting into the same old, same old with Exorcist stuff. But uh, I still think that if you're excited about it, if you're on the hype train, you know, it's it's still Halloween season. It's worth checking out again. Beautifully shot, strong first act, great performances, just not enough meat on the bone. Yeah, and I'm going to go proceed with caution as well. I think that strong first act really does kind of save uh, the film overall from being anything like a slash it or anything like that. So um, I think, you know, if you love possession films, hey, this could be for you. Yeah, this could if, be great. You know, if you love the tropes and everything, hey, then I think The Exorcist is something you'd enjoy. But, you know, this being a film that's going to... Um, add anything to the lore of a possession film or kind of go in a different route or anything like that if that's what you're expecting you're not going to get it here um but i think you know being able to enjoy that that first act and just uh, see that tension that's built and kind of uh, where they could have went i think is worth at least checking out um so yeah i'm gonna go uh proceed with caution as well all righty well that's gonna wrap us up here for exorcist believer guys yeah unfortunately this one didn't totally you know make it for us but it also it, it didn't shit the bed it didn't halloween ends us we're not walking out angry and that's always a good sign um so i definitely see a little bit of improvement on the gordon green front but we're just not quite there uh, but other than that, we got a lot of great stuff on the channel. Another Blumhouse horror movie hitting streaming this week is Totally Killer. We got a review up for that. That was pretty fun. We enjoyed that. A very different style of film entirely, but uh, good nonetheless. We still have a lot of Fantastic Fest stuff uh, already posted, and we're going to be wrapping that up here shortly. Uh, we got a nice, big, uh, meaty property, meaty review coming to you guys uh, this Saturday. So keep your eyes out for that. I'm real excited to talk about that. I know Luke is too. And uh, yeah, of course, we got our uh, thing going on with Full Moon Features right now. We're, you know, letting you guys know about the Tiny Terrors. Uh, there's a link down in the description below. Feel free to hit that if you want to get more information as that starts to roll out. And yeah, other than that, that's going to wrap us up here. So if you're new to the channel, hit subscribe, like this video, send it around to your friends. And uh, yeah, that's going to wrap it up. So until next time, I'm Dylan Newell. And I'm Luke Janesco. And remember, stay scared. Stay scared.